Whether or not I'm currently wearing trousers is a secret I'll take to the grave. Hello, I'm Greg and I'm making a Mandalorian blaster and display inspired by the Mandalorian. Intro. I think my intros have been maybe a bit long. Let me know if they haven't. Don't let me know if they have. Basically, I heard there was this very prop accurate in terms of scale, but very cheap, uh, Ruby's toy Mando gun for about 10 quid. I looked it up online and was then hounded with targeted advertising on various social media platforms. And I give in to that. I give in to that stuff. It was always there like a thing I was probably going to buy. A friend of mine had a Star Wars fancy dress party. Soon as that was planned, bought. Was I ever going to make a Mandalorian costume? No. That would be crazy. I don't have sufficient Beskar, but I bought this, watched a few toy modding videos, people who tell you how to do it in less than half an hour, and was inspired. I was similarly inspired for the display stand by an old manky fruit and veg tray. And I think that's it. Actually, just as an experiment, let's try putting this here. Please do like this video, or subscribe to my channel, or share it with a friend, or ideally do all three. Thanks very much. Action. Okay, we're pressing play in three, two, one. I normally cut that out. First step, sanding. Take the shine off that sucker. This is a bit of scotch bright. they call it in America. It's terracotta coloured wire wool, quite soft. And you just sand it, sand it, sand it, until it doesn't have any glossy sheen. Charlie's brother. These are just ordinary finger um, nail files. I was gonna say fingernail boards. Oh my God. Uh, fingernail boards. Yeah. So here, all the way around, is a seam line where the two bits join together, but you can sand it off. And all you do is just sand it, and that seam line has gone. Very proud of how much that seam's gone away. I've never seen anyone else do this. Someone must have, but if a thing is made of plastic, you can just carve wood grain into it with a spiky thing. So I'm using uh, Magomji bar, I think I used a craft knife as well, and then just uh, sanding it this time with some proper wire wool to get rid of the little crumbly dumbly plastic nibblies that come out. Drilling out the barrel. One guy I saw, his final finishing touch was he filled his gun, because it's completely hollow, there's nothing, there's nothing working in there, with sand. So I bought some aquarium sand and I dug out my funnel, but this is mounted on a wall on two not massively strong hooks, so in the end I never do fill it with sand, though it would feel cool. So we want to make this like these. These are our references. Still from the show and a couple of other props. Make yours like mine. What film is that quote from? Okay, feeling very smug about this. These are tea bag tabs. I bought a bag of them from Scrap, because they're actually quite nice sci-fi panels. And I thought, if I have things with holes already punched in them, I can use them as button templates. Masking, you've got to spend your time somewhere. So if you spend your time masking, you can then colour in very quickly. So here, even though this knob I think is brass, I couldn't quite find references that agree on whether it's brass or not, I'm still doing an under layer of my liquid chrome pen and just stippling it and dabbing it on so it has a kind of hammered texture rather than streaky and then covering that with this very chunky gold pen. When it works it's it's satisfying. Use the word satisfying a lot, that's always the word of the week. Again satisfying. Went through my round bits box and found this perfectly sized ring which later becomes part of the prop to use as a template for colouring in that side wheel. That's too silver but we'll make it darker later. More masking. Do I have anything to say? M -m -m mask. Do you know what that is? Are you old? Why did I think that the square button on the side needed a prime with the liquid chrome pen and the trigger didn't? He got lazy. He got lazy and he started to slip. Also, I say you can colour it in quickly, really quickly, because I'm using pens rather than paint. I'm very aware, I've done all this this week, so this is a very current video, and I'm very aware that a lot of YouTubers, as soon as they have a Patreon, or as soon as they say I'm going to do an episode every two weeks, they become obsessed with how long everything takes and that hasn't necessarily not happened to me. Drawback of pens, of course, is you get a pen line. So what I'm doing here is just sort of scribbling the silver on and then hammer effecting it with a bit of sponge. I mean, I'm smearing it mostly with my finger, but I think that's bad practice. So I'm gonna tell you to use a sponge. But I've had silver fingertips all week. Again, the more lovingly you do your masking, the less lovingly you have to do your coloring. There's an equation, an equation of care. Miscellaneous bric-a-brac bric a brac miscellaneous bric a brac <laughs> So yeah, price tag with a nice big hole in it. Colour it in, and then very deftly... The flowers are still standing. So this is a beautiful graphic fineliner paint pen, just for doing fine black 
details. The cheaper the toy, the more satisfying this process is, because it's all one big piece of plastic, so you're making it look like it has functioning parts, which is cool. Masking off the handle neatly around the top, and then just wrap the rest of the gun in paper. <sighs> Lovely smooth valve control. And using this brown spray paint, because it's my only brown spray paint, and setting it in the sun to dry. Hanging it on the fence, because some lunatics put clothes on the washing line. Weathering! So I was just drying off, sort of exhausting. Is that what it's called? Let's call that exhausting the pen. I was just exhausting my silver Sharpie because I don't want to go slopping any silver, silver ink on there. And I'm just catching the edges. The trick is to use the side of the nib. Let the side of the nib meet the edge of the edge. You don't want to be drawing a line on like with a pen. You want to be sort of scraping at the most oblique or shallow, what's the right word, angle you can to just scrape paint down those edges. It's very satisfying. So what you're faking here is that the, the blacking on the gun has been chipped off by gunfire and space adventures. So really what you're drawing on is the silver that is underneath the black paint. You can do it more technically precisely by using masking fluid. So you paint the whole thing silver, put masking fluid in certain places, then paint it black and then peel the fluid off and it reveals actual silver underneath but this is the easier way. So there, um, I've overdone it and smeared a load of silver ink, and as long as you're quick, you can rub it off again, but you do have to be quick. This, All this is kind of permanent ink, so if you make a mistake, same with when I colour in the handle with Sharpie, if you're gonna wipe it, wipe it fast. Liquid Chrome. I thought it might be good to use two different shades of silver, so there's like older scratches and newer ones, but what I'm doing here is just tapping in where whole flakes of black paint have come off rather than scratches again let the edge meet the edge and there i've just you see with the silver i've kind of rounded off the corners on the underside of that butt which i really like it's just a, a diagonal sort of flaking on the corners of things so you're rounding out the corners of the black bits with silver so this is the aforementioned sharpie that again if you're going to smear smear fast because it's very very permanent and i'm just kind of wading in <laughs> waving my sharpie around but like with the cantina band masks or with anything really this is the early stage of weathering where you go in heavy big shadows big lines big scratches and it's going to get dulled down with a, a dust pass later on which looks great these are the brush pens i got for christmas probably at least 30 years ago. The Red Dwarf drawings I shared in my Red Dwarf picture frame video uh, were coloured in with these pens. They're great pens, thanks mum. Dry brush time. The big blush brush. Get it so you think there won't be any paint on the prop at all. And then this is just a general scuffing. I'm trying to hit the sort of front edges, chips from the front. We all like chips from the front. There's a reason props aren't black, because black doesn't give you highlights and it doesn't give you shadows. So when you see this, this prop, particularly under bright light, it's dark silver at best, or at most. So what I'm trying to do here is just an all over, it's slightly hammered look. It's slightly sparkly, which is lovely and fabulous. I mean, it's so little paint that it's dried to dust. <laughs> yeah, so we're in a good place for dry brushing because that achieved absolutely nothing. That was a dry brush. We took it to its logical conclusion, but you know, it's hard to take off, so it's best not to put any on. So we're just looking for areas that are boring. There's nothing happening in there. And when it's streaky and you get these very fine lines, they really do look like scratches of what was a blacked gun, but has been, you know, chucked around the space desert and someone's hammered nails in with it and treated it very badly. And finally, just because I've had this idea, I'm going to use that makeup brush. It's got to be called a fan brush because I'm thinking it will be good for scratches. I don't know. The nice thing about this gun is I know it's going to be on a display facing that way. So every time I do something new, I try it on this side. Let's go. Yeah. Yup. Yep. So you get these proper scratches rather than just general patina. However, he is patina, patina, patina. I approve. Let's do the, let's do the show side. Because mm. I know what I'm like. I was thinking that I'd be doing a black wash on this at some point, but thanks to this paint pen that my wife's lent me. Hi, Christina, if you're watching. I think maybe I don't need to. I want some of these for Christmas. Write that down. I want some of these for Christmas. Write that down in your copy books now. So if you are feeling that your silver dry brushing went a bit far, this knocks the shadows down again and just sharpens everything. This is all one piece of plastic. So adding in these shadows round things makes them look separate. Anywhere that's gold, I edge it in silver and it sharpens the edges. Everything on camera you do bigger because it needs to register. It's about registering things in the eyes of the viewer and making things iconic and graphic shapes. You overdo it to make sure the story is quickly told. So this needs to look like, oh, it's a battered cowboy's gun when you see it for eight frames or from a distance. And that's the joy of aesthetic. 
capturing the aesthetic of something. Actually, more than making a replica. Obviously, this is a replica because I'm just colouring in a toy. Uh, like a big like a big boy. So I want to do a Men in Black style gun or a picture frame that looks like Red Dwarf. And, and what is that? So it's okay, Red Dwarf, where you have 45 degree corners, everything's covered in grime. Star Wars, everything's covered in grime. Men in Black, everything isn't covered in grime. It's chrome, it's atom punk, it's 50s optimism in America. So things have fins on and things are decorative as well as functional. So this is industrial and grimy and trying to achieve that aesthetic. And the reasons I'm standing at my computer to paint are twofold. One, I have these lovely references. That's the screen grab from the show. And these are both from Adam Savage on Tested. What his looks like is probably right. So for example, I'm going to add this metal strip down the sides of the handles with a cable tie, obviously. The other reason is if I stand in the window, the sunshine's too hot. He talks a lot this week. <laughs> Three hours and six minutes. That's how much footage I gave myself to edit into this mere 30 something minute long video. So that's mounted on there. So let's centre it on that one. And it's going to have lights. It's inspired by the Andor control panel. I think it was a challenge, like a YouTube making challenge. It's a guy called Smuggler's Room who makes Star Wars stuff. So there might be some hexagonal lights, white lines, coloured lights, one inch squares, probably diagonal corners, and then weather it to smithereens. So the gun is 34 centimetres long. And if that's the top, we could get it done in 20. And be gone in 60 seconds. So maybe it's... maybe it's Maybelline. No. I do want to put a layer of varnish on this handle, so I'm going to do that first, and then while that dries, start working on this. So this is Dirty Down Rust. I wasn't going to use this as my varnish, but my little pot of clear Tamiya Colour Orange turned out to be empty. I just kept the pot to remind myself to buy some more. Didn't work. So this stuff is a really good instant rust effect, which I'm going to use on my next build, I think. But if you don't mix up all the lovely chemical and metal stuff that's in the bottom of the jar and just use the stuff in the top, it's just a very nice kind of rich mahogany clear stain. So I'm using what I've got to great effect. Unpainted and painted. I think that looks great. It just does. Oh, that's bright sunshine. So what I'm doing here is just twizzling the brush. Just turn the brush as you pull it to make sure that the, the paint comes off in a nice wavy wood grain style line. Punk! I actually dremeled that and then just popped it out at the end with my craft knife, cutting off the crumbly dumbles from down the side. There he is. Good morning! I've already done some work this morning. I tried Operation Cable Tie Handle Strip. And it nearly works, but it wasn't perfect. I could just see daylight under the cable tie and the handle. That sucker came off. So what I've done instead is I've filled this in with Plasto. Let's get the Plasto. Where is it? Mm. Yeah. Plasto, stinky uh, modelling potty, like plastic polyfiller basically. Obviously this is a stage you want to do at the sanding stage because when I sand this I don't want to mess up this paint job and it's a step sideways, well, maybe not backwards but sideways. So we just need to let this dry and sand it smooth and then paint it black and make it match the rest. <sighs> Whip cut to designing the display stand. So, we've got this cutout panel. I'm not going to diagonalise the corners just yet because I don't know how far in or how big I want those corners to be. So what have I got? The guitar pickup cover. That could light up. I've got these. You know when you see a van or a company that says gutters, fascias and soffits? These are soffit vents for venting air into your soffits if your soffits are damp. Which... on that maybe make that hexagonal in parallel with that corner. No, because it's not 45 degrees, and that way madness lies. So I've got all this, this is all free real estate. Is that a central thing? Is that a central thing? <laughs> you trying to get out, buddy? If only there was some way he could communicate to me that he wants me to open the window. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. He was on the windowsill for two and a half seconds. I hope you find, you know, cat ownership within YouTube videos cute. And he sat down. The next shot I'm going to do is me drawing on the pad that he's just um, decided is a cat bed. He's playing with my soffit vents. Agent of Chaos. And we're back. So here's the plan. Plan one of four. I thought that figuring something out sort of live on camera to show the whole creative process and changing your mind and f I'm going to do this, now I'm going to do that, might be entertaining, but my word, it was a lot of footage. So now I'm going to put batteries in the lights and see how diffuse they are. Not very. 
Complete change of plan, ironically, because these coloured lights are what inspired this project. They're very good as individual little lights, but they don't make good light boxes. They flash and they're cute. They're not the right thing for this job. So what else have we got? Plan 204 was LED dog collars. A light that you just squeeze and they flash and they're lots of different colours. But I also decided against those because they don't make good diffused light panels. Carry on. So I've completely changed the plan to that. These are going to be red lights because this bike light I've got is red. This little LED clip light I'm going to make orange, white square, blue square. These are going to be lit up with plan three of four is this cob LED light. These are little, very, very bright. They can light up a whole room. Button on the side, charger on the other and I was going to make a light box with it, but again, it's too bright in relation to the other lights, so it also doesn't work for lighting up a panel. The creative process. Um, yeah, let's get on with it. Montage. 45 degree ruler, cut the corners off, use tracing paper to make the template. Well, that was quite clever. Cut it out. Just a moment's appreciation for the clear ruler with a grid on it. If you're in the business of drawing right angles, get one and your life will change for the better. Stick it to some perspex first, try cutting that out with a jigsaw. How did that go? So, the jigsaw shattered that bit of perspex to smithereens. The Dremel resulted in this completely unparallel, unstraight piece of plastic. So, I might just saw it out by hand. Imagine having a bandsaw in your house. Right angle, please. Vroom. Take about three minutes. Or a laser cutter. Your very own pet laser in your house. And you just give it like a picture of what you want and wander off. And when you go back, you've got a sort of Ikea flat pack of exactly the thing you want. <sighs> Someday, but at the moment, we're in the Geppetto level of tech. Yeah. Acoustic guitar sting. Hello. Welcome to The Joy of Wood, a quiet anti-power tool. No, you see, I have a choice now. I'm at a crossroads where I become either, I either buy every power tool going or I become an anti-power tool, spoon carving kind of guy. I do genuinely love the smell of MDF in the morning. It's not the morning. It's quite late in the afternoon. That's the problem. I get the three o'clock scaries, you know. But this is nice. Just sandpaper around a block and just sh 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 do it by hand. Looks good though. It's all good, man. Another fun tool. This pilot hole making thingy. You've got a pilot hole. Search for pilot hole making thingy. Link below. <laughs> Not really. Montage two. Drill six holes to mount the bike light behind. Cut out some silver DVD case to use as a panel for the squares. This is food packaging. I think they're for making sticks of chocolate or icing to go on a cake or something. Wanted to use them and did. The handle's now dry, so sand that. Then stick some cable ties around the square holes. Stick a whole one on so it's straight and then cut out the gap in the middle. Windows. One, two, three. There's a neatness to that that's very satisfying. When those are different colors and they light up. Cut out that window for the light box. Dirty, dirty. Dirtiest mirror on YouTube. That's a guarantee. So, I've popped out that, and it really was that easy. I've decided this is iteration three or four. Let's keep track. No plan survives contact with the enemy. And we finally reached plan four of four, or the plan. The little cob light thing is just too bright, so I'm using these weaker battery-operated fairy lights and mounting them in an old camera slide box, which is the perfect size. And it fits in there perfectly. Rather than try to stick them into the bottom of the box, I'm mounting them on a bit of white card, which I'll just slot in, using the masking tape to hold down the wires to just hold them in place long enough that I can get a bead of hot glue along all the bulbs, and checking that they still work obsessively. I mean, that's pretty great. So I've just covered them in hot glue and a little rectangle of clear plastic, which I've sanded so it's diffuse. Then I cut the bottom out of that slide box to make room for the wires, carefully folded the wires in, because these wires will snap, then to diffuse it even more, I'm using a little rectangle of packing foam. And because it doesn't show on camera, but you can see the texture of that foam, I'm also putting in a rectangle of tracing paper. This is a blue plastic folder. Oh, it's really not to 60 this video. It's long, but it's, it's long and fast. I'm going to jump back. Hang on. So for my blue square, I'm using a bit of this old blue plastic folder cover. And these are my lighting gels. And I'm cutting out a little bit of blue to double up the blue. This lovely LED key ring, I've cut off the plastic hook. I'm popping the clear housing off and sanding it again to diffuse the light. So you can't see the LEDs quite so clearly. Then just making it orange with an orange Sharpie, coloring on both the inside and the outside. 
Here I'm just tacking the soffit bent speakers on the back of the face plates with some super glue just to hold it in place and then once I flip it over super glue and baking soda to really hold it in place. Edges. When you paint the raw edge of MDF it goes fuzzy and lumpy and sort of sandpapery texture because it absorbs the paint and goes lumpy. So here I'm just sealing it by putting super glue all around the edge and spreading it out like a layer of varnish before the paint goes on. These, I love that I got to use one of these. These are, you know when you used to be on telly and you stay at the Premier Inn in Slough? These are mini packs of Nutella that you get on the breakfast bar. So I would always leave breakfast with my pockets full <laughs> because I just like this little tab that you get on the side. So five or six of them would leave with me. I thought about getting cargo trousers for like food stealing, you know, lots of pockets. like. Goodbye. This is a round corner cutter that again my wife lent me. She uses it to round the corners on her custom envelopes. Rounded corners is a sci-fi essential. So here's that ring that I used to colour in the silver wheel on the side of the gun, which has now been promoted to starring role because it fits perfectly round the orange light. So again, tack it in place on the front with super glue, but then stick it in place on the back with super glue and baking soda. Time for the sides. These are my wood bits. That's my tin of square dowels that I'm going to use to stick the sides on straight. And these sides are going to be made with what I've got left of the picture frame from which I made the two keypads on my Chindinkaloo flute when I made cantina band instruments. I have exactly the right amount. Like what I've got left is about this much of it, which that's very satisfying word of the week. So with picture frames, all you need to do is pull out the uh, metal mickeys. And then here, lovely thing to realize, I, you can use the 45 degree corner of the picture frame, but then if you cut the other one straight, it makes a 45 degree corner. Where straight meets 45, you get 45, as my tattoo says. Not a great mitre box. The Amazon reviews weren't lying, because um, you just cut into the plastic. But it's a good saw and 45 degrees. As I think is in the true spirit of the low-budget sci-fi movie Star Wars, Episode 4, A New Hope, aesthetic choices are often logistical choices. What do I mean by that? Well, I want to put that there. So you have to do something about how you can see the frame through those little holes. I could move this up so it's resting on top of those holes. However, I want to, when it's finished, edge the whole thing with this very shallow sort of L bracket like that. So if the frame is too far away, then you can just see where it is. So you sort of, you jig around and you figure it out and you move things up and down and left and right. And all creativity is editing. It's just moving things around until they're right, but also until they work, which is maybe more important than them being right. Anyway, I've made a little jig. Tip learnt from Hirt at Dark Matter Workshop. Make a jig out of Lego. I've decided to pride myself on how janky the back of this thing is going to be. I was going to hold the frame in place with little blocks of Lego there and there as my as my brackets, but even those you can kind of see the Lego nubbins through the lozenge. <laughs> so I've chopped up a load of square dowels or beams or whatever they are and I'm going to use those to hold the frame at a right angle with the back. And I've filled in the holes where you're going to see the frame through with frozen food tray packaging. So now it's finally, I say finally, it's only about 10am, but I was trying to paint these before the laundry was done. There's a, there's a tussle there's a power play. Is the backyard for spray painting or is it for hanging up laundry? And uh, today I lost. So I've stuck the square dowel to the inside edge of the frame. Then I'm tacking this in place with super glue and then actually holding it in place with blobs of hot glue and using that Lego jig to keep it at a right angle, which is really good. Isn't it? <laughs> so now we've just got four gaps where the corners are not even measuring it, just putting the spare pieces in and drawing a line with a pencil of how long it needs to be. And then to solve the problem of these bits that stick out, because they technically need to be different thicknesses, just sawing them off. Here I'm sticking on the plastic edging to make it neat. I'm using contact glue. Whether I put on too much or it's a bit old or didn't work that well. You put a bit on both sides, leave it two or three minutes till it feels dry. And then usually the two things fuse together, never to be separated again. But in the end, I actually squirted a load of super glue under the edges of these plastic things just to hold it on. A quick word of warning about using uh, food packaging. It doesn't like hot glue. You can see there that that texture has just melted. So it's fine. I've got these plastic kind of Meccano pieces which fit too perfectly in there not to use them. And then I think in the middle, I'm just going to fill them with a bit of baking soda and super glue. But yeah, flimsy food packaging and heat. Maybe use like liquid nails or construction adhesive or a non-hot glue. Just a thought. 
a bit box, bit box number six, let's call this one. These are, I bought from a charity shop, a four pack of just wooden puzzles of shapes that come apart how any human can put them back together. To me, they're just nicely shaped bits of wood. And then these are my sandwich bag clips, and I'm gonna mount one of those on top for a bit of edge detail. We are primed, we're primed black. The MDF plate I cut out had a couple, had a few like rogue knife wounds, a few sort of slashes and scratches that I didn't like. So I thought I'll texture it all over with super glue, which will also separate it from the back plate. But in the end, I had a little bit of a mishap where maybe some masking tape took off a huge piece of the black primer from the back plate and just with just green plastic taunting me. So in the end, I textured the back plate as well. So it's maybe overly textured. Tapa tapa tapa, little toothbrush style -y. <laughs> yeah, so because just under where the handle goes on the left, a big piece of the black paint came off with some masking tape because I masked around the silver edge. And because I've done the edge silver, I didn't want to spray it black again. This is some gloss black enamel paint just with a brush. And because it couldn't be as smooth as spray paint, I'm stippling it on. So the whole thing is textured and weathered. But this is space cowboy territory, so that's fine. It's desert tech. Dry brushing, of course. Now all the black is done, just dry brushing some silver onto here, trying to catch the edge of the lozenge holes or capsule shape. Is that a lozenge shape or a capsule shape? This stuff, I love this stuff. This is kitchen drawer liner, which looks like ribbed rubber, but is really thin. You just cut it with scissors and just adds a bit of detail to those two cradles, we'll call them. Again, tack the orange light in place, and then I held it in place with just four dots of hot glue, being careful not to stick the back on so I can still unscrew it and change the battery when I need to. Another thing I've had for 30 years is this speaker cover that my brother got rid of, and it's just a really nice black metal mesh. So I cut off a rectangle of that, then I'm going to cover those four holes with it, but then cover the back of it with black card to make room for the battery pack of the light panel. Nearly there, and then once I put the gun on the display stand, I realised they were just all the same colour, like they're the same colour scheme. So I'm now dry brushing the black and silver background with some antique gold. So it's got a bronzy, brassy effect. And anywhere I've gone overboard, I'm just touching in with a little bit of black to knock it back again. It's course correction. It's little, it's like when I tried to steer a boat on the Norfolk Broads on my brother-in-law stag do. Awful. Okay, so here we're putting in the light box. I tried gluing in the tracing paper and realised you could just see through it and I didn't need to glue it in. So I'm just loosely fitting in the rectangle of plastic, the blue cellophane square, the rectangle of tracing paper, and then all that's just being held in by me sticking in this light box and making sure the hot glue doesn't bleed around the sides of it and get into the front where you could see it through the buttons. Here's a technique that I love that I haven't used yet on this channel, a dust pass. So I recently, no not recently, two and a half years ago, had to make a rusty werewolf cage and I did it with pastels and it just makes something immediately look like it's been at the bottom of a shed, like an old lawnmower or something. So I'm scraping various browns and oranges and yellows and then just dabbing it all in with a brush. And it just gives things age immediately and it's really, really satisfying. Satisfying, word of the week. I thought smithereens was word of the week, so I use it a couple of times, but uh, satisfying. That must mean this went well, because I keep saying it. I dry brushed a bit of gold over the silver as well to give it a, a sort of burnished, tarnished? Are they the opposite of each other? Is burnished polished and tarnished is old? Anyway, just to warm up the silver, so it's warm silver, not chrome and then doing the same on the gun because we're dust past crazy here at greg johnson making we all are aren't we aren't we guys we're a dust past loving corporation and then i nearly forgot this you have to have some white lines and a couple of dots because it's star wars i considered not freehanding it but just drawing a line with this white uh, posca pen and a ruler the masking is worth it not for the lines but for the corners you get some very nice right angles also this took about 12 minutes so it was also worth it for that reason too so here finally yet yeah, finally i'm just using my leather punch to cut two holes with quite a lot of effort into a piece of masking tape boom and the job is done very happy with that having primed it black in may i did everything else this week so it's been a busy one and very happy with it. I'm going to mount it about there, have a bit of a change of my set and put something there, but that's another video. So before we see the finished thing, I should just mention again this week's recommended YouTube channel, which is The Smuggler's Room. If you like Star Wars things, particularly made out of plumbing parts and found things, which is in the spirit of the original Star Wars, because it's all about reusing junk, I highly recommend them. Here it is, well lit and rotating.
thank you very much to Laurie Teberge for letting me use their piano version of the Mandalorian theme and letting me add things to it as well. Go to their channel, they just play these mesmerising, it's just shot of hands, playing themes beautifully. Thank you Laurie for the enthusiasm for a stranger from the other side of the world. I love these remote musical collaborations, so if you're a musician who wants to have a go at that, do contact me. Yeah. The other people I need to thank are my patrons. We're a family now, we're about to see their names. Just bless them. It's a wonderful feeling and gives me enormous impetus that's the right word, yeah, impetus to do these videos and get round to making things that I've, in many cases, meant to make for a long, long time. They will get this video a week early because they're worth it. I've already put out a little bonus item, got lots more of those to come. Uh, we've had a poll and it's just great. So please, if you haven't joined the Patreon, do consider joining my Patreon. The link is below and um, I would just be so grateful. I'd be so grateful that I've gone a bit shy. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Lots of love and I'll see you very soon. Patrons!